Good morning. My name is Rafael Espina. I'm the chair of the Consumer Affairs Committee. I'm joined today by other members of the committee. We have Peter Koo from Queens, Margaret Chin from Manhattan, uh, Karen Kozlowitz from Queens, and Brad Lander from Brooklyn. Today the committee will vote on four pieces of legislation. Two of the bills relate to the regulation of the growing sightseeing tour bus industry in the city of New York, and two relate to street vending. New York City has long been one of the world's pre preeminent travel destinations for both businesses and leisure. In 2017, there were a record 62.8 million visitors to New York City, the eighth consecutive year of growth. The sightseeing bus industry has benefited from this increase in tourism over the past decade, and according to the Department of Consumer Affairs, there are currently 197 sightseeing buses, a figure that has more than tripled since 2004. The sightseeing bus industry is an important aspect of tourism in the city. However, their growing presence on the city's roads has, has contributed to complaints and concerns regarding traffic congestion, pollution, and noise. Recently, there have been growing concerns regarding traffic congestion and safety, especially in light of the number of disturbing high-profile accidents involving tour buses. In August of 2014, two sightseeing buses collided in Times Square and at least 15 people were injured. All but one of the injured were pedestrians. The driver of one of the buses in the incident was, was arrested and charged with driving while impaired. The driver's license has been suspended 11 times previously. In 2016, 13 people were injured aboard a sightseeing bus when it mounted the curb and crashed into a tree along Central Park. The crash shut down Fifth Avenue for five hours. And in November last year, three people were hospitalized when a charter bus driver struck a delivery truck outside of the Richard Rogers Theater. These and other serious accidents involving sightseeing buses has prompted the council to re-examine its power to regulate the industry and take reasonable steps to prevent future incidents. Part of the difficulty in regulating the city's sightseeing buses are the myriad of laws that currently govern the industry. Late last year, New York State Senator Brad Hoylman endeavored to investigate these laws. His final report found that current regulations governing New York City's sightseeing buses create a multi-jurisdictional web riddled with loopholes, contradictions, and lower standards that combine to allow sightseeing bus companies to operate in an environment with limited oversight and lax enforcement. The vote today on proposed intro bill number 723A and proposed intro bill number 727A are an effort to address and mitigate these loopholes, provide stricter regulations of the city's sightseeing buses, and ensure the safety of New York City residents and tourists alike. The first bill to address these concerns is proposed intro bill number 723A from the speaker. This bill requires sightseeing buses, bus companies to submit their passenger pickup and drop off locations for approval to the Department of Transportation before obtaining or renewing a license from the Department of Consumer Affairs. In approving the stops, DOT will take into account traffic, pedestrian flow, and public safety. To further enhance safety measures, my bill, intro number 727A, will establish basic requirements for sightseeing bus drivers. This includes provisions to ensure that the driver has not had their motor vehicle license or commercial driver license suspended or revoked two or more times within the past five years has not accumulated nine or more points on the driving record within an 18-month period, and has not been convicted of any alcohol or drug-related offense within the past three years. The bill would also require the companies to inform DCA of any accidents or traffic infraction involving their tour buses within three days of the incident. The third bill we will vote on today is Intro 959A, sponsored by Councilmember Chin, which would expand the zone around the World Trade Center in which food and general vendors are prohibited. The original campus security plan was drafted after the devastating September, 9, September 11 attacks and aimed to create a secure perimeter around the vulnerable site. In addition to prohibiting general and food vending within the exclusion zone, the campus plan also outlines various security checkpoints and other measures to ensure all vehicles in the area can be, can be pre-screened and authorized. Since the plan was drafted in 2013, however, the area has seen a massive redevelopment. The re revitalization of the World Trade Center precinct in the last few years includes the opening of the Westfield Shopping District, path passageways connected to subway stations, and new office towers, all of which have increased activity in the area and prompted the need for more security points to come online. Under the current security plan, some of these security points are located outside of the existing vending exclusion zone. This means that vendors are able to step, set up alongside the security booths which together with lines of customers can interfere with security sight lines. Intro 959A seeks to extend the exclusion zone to incorporate these new security points and ensure they remain free from obstructions. Original versions of the bill simply extended the exclusion zone a few blocks in each direction. However, upon mapping the impact that this expansion would have on street vendors in the area, specific carve-outs were made on a street-by-street -street basis. 
Great care was also taken into the drafting of this bill to ensure that Zuccotti Park, a prominent street vending area, would not be incorporated into the exclusion zone. The final bill today is proposed intro bill number 969A, which aims to restrict obstructions and street vendors in certain areas of downtown Flushing at certain hours of the day. Downtown Flushing is a vibrant and bustling area within the borough of Queens with an estimated population of over 72,000. This area is experiencing a development boom with a range of new businesses and residential developments in the works. Given that the area is also one of the largest transportation hubs in New York City with more than 20 bus lines and seven subway stops and nearby Long Island Railroad lines, it is no wonder it is such an attractive environment for business and residential investment. However, this rapid growth has also caused problems, especially with sidewalk congestion. Downtown Flushing has a population density per square mile that is almost twice that of New York City, so competition for sidewalk space is at a critical level. This area's residents already experience the heaviest foot traffic outside of Manhattan, which is why intro 969A seeks to limit sidewalk obstructions and restrict the areas where street vendors can locate themselves. I believe my colleagues might have some comments to make on their bills. Thank you, Chair. Um, today we're voting on a bill that would help ensure safety for the growing number of residents and pedestrians in and around the World Trade Center site. The streetscape around the World Trade Center is unique. Since no vending zone was established, important security infrastructures, including bollards, security, credentialing kiosks, and vehicle checkpoints has been installed and to adjust for the reality of a newly revitalized site. By pursuing a limited expansion of the no vending zone to include these security points, this legislation would create a buffer to prevent crowds and any other obstruction from blocking their sight lines. My office worked very hard to achieve two goals, ensuring safety for a growing number of residents, workers, and visitors, while minimizing impact on surrounding street vendors. I wanted to thank Speaker Johnson, uh, council staff, especially Rachel Cordero and Leah Skriipik, and my uh, legislative director, Marion Patera, for their hard work in creating a balanced bill that increased safety for those that live, work, and visit uh, the World Trade Center area, as well as acknowledging street vendors' vital role in our downtown economy. I hope that uh, all my colleagues can join me in voting yes on the bill. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, I want to say something. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, for your leadership and your dedication on this committee. Uh, this, legisla this legislation looks um, to begin to finally address the issue of sidewalk vendors impending, uh, impeding on the shared public spaces of downtown Flushing. As one of the busiest transportation hubs in New York City, the downtown Flushing area has recently become overrun with sidewalk obstruction Last year, we widened the sidewalks in hopes of providing more spaces for the hundreds of thousands of pedestrians who commute here. Unfortunately, our widened sidewalks has given rise to an increase in street vending of all kinds. The less, this legislation looks to return the sidewalks of one of the city's busiest transportation hubs back to the people. I have low obstruction to vendors being innovative in order to conduct their business. But I wholeheartedly object to those who do so at the expense of their community. So this bill says prohibits vending around the downtown area in the afternoon and evening hours. While I'm open to discuss the creation of a designated vending zone in our community in the future, we first need to address the problem of congestion that exists today. I thank the speaker and my colleagues for joining me today. Thank you also to uh, Jason Goldman, Walt Newman, Rachel Cordero, J James DiGiovanni, and all the members um, in the legislative staff. And also I want to thank uh, uh, Andrew Wilbur and, and also committee chair Aspinall and my own staff. Uh, I lived in Flushing for 35 years, and with God's blessing, I hope I can live another 30 years. Right? <laughs> so this is one thing I want to do for the community. I want to 
make sure like 10 years from now, people, when I walk on the street, people will come to me and compliment me. Peter, you did something good for our community. So I hope my staff, uh, my colleagues in the committee uh, will support the bill. Thank you. Thank you. With that said, would, uh, would you please call the roll? Good morning. This is the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing voting on intros 723A, 727A, 959A, and 969A. We'll begin with Chairman Espinal. I vote aye. Council Member Chin. Aye. No. Council Member Ku. Aye. Council Member Kozlowitz. Aye. Council Member Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Mr. Chair? Yeah. Permission sure. to explain? Of course. Thank you very much. Uh, I vote aye on 723A and 727A. On the vending bills, I feel much more ambivalent. I have very high respect for Council Members Chin and Ku, and I respect their knowledge of their district. Um, and the reasons that are put forward in these bills for the restrictions, I think, are not unreasonable in either case. But I don't feel good about us acting without a broader framework for vending um, at this point in time, either for clarifying where we're going to make additional restrictions and with what rules and guidelines, or as part of broader comprehensive reform that addresses the issues of vendor permits and some of the other issues that have made life difficult for street vendors for years, which we endeavored to change last term and did not succeed, and which I hope we will take up this term. There are definitely zones where I think vending should be restricted. You only got to go on the Brooklyn Bridge to, to see that. Um, and I think these are reasonable reasons, but I don't feel comfortable with us doing it in the absence of a more thoughtful and comprehensive policy where we only act to restrict in individual zones by legislation in a bigger way. So I'm going to vote no on 969A, uh, and I'm going to abstain on 959A uh, because that's such a small number of vendors and requested by the NYPD, and I respect uh, Councilmember Chin's work to limit the area so much. Um, I think the possibility there of making sure that all the vendors who are displaced have solid other locations nearby where they could go remains possible. Um, and I would like to see us uh, try to achieve that uh, before we restrict them from the World Trade Center site. So I vote aye on 723A and 727A, no on 969, and I abstain on 959. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, all items were adopted by a vote of five in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of intro 969A, which was adopted by a vote of four in the affirmative, and one negative, and zero abstentions, and intro 959A, which was adopted by a vote of four in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention. All right, with that said, uh, this meeting is adjourned.